7.40, morning to you. You're watching and listening to Breakfast with Steve and Anne. You are indeed. Oh, yes, good morning. <laughs> Let's take a look at today's front pages. The Times leads with the largest rise in interest rates for three decades. The Guardian has a Manchester Arena inquiry which found several victims died from survivable injuries. And the Mail also goes with that, uh, the Manchester Arena inquiry, revealing several failings by the emergency services. The eye goes back to the Bank of England and their prediction for Britain's longest ever recession. And the Express says there are stormy times ahead as the UK faces the longest recession. Let's go through some of those then, and uh, hopefully to cheer us up a little bit this morning. Former Chief Secretary to the Treasury, David Meller, and broadcaster Liz Kershaw. Good morning, both. That's your task this hour. Well, That's I did a, just I, grit you, didn't I? And, you did just do a Heimlich maneuver. And my glasses shot off. <laughs> Nothing came out of my mouth. Your glasses, I think you did it wrong. Um, Liz, let's have a look at the mail, should we? And actually, a, a, a cap on social care. Yes, this has been an ongoing saga, hasn't it? I mean, it was partly the downfall fall of Theresa May in her short stint as Prime Minister. Um, I've got a young friend, well, she, she's a friend of my, my son's, who um, works in a care home, has done all the way through COVID, 23 people died on her. She's paid about 10 quid an hour. Um, terrible uh, skin throughout COVID because wearing a plastic mask all day. She told me the other day that the people in her care home uh, charged £1,000 a week. £1,000 a week. Where do you get that money from? Well, you need to sell your home. Now, the, the NHS is supposed to be cradle to grave, so there's a whole issue around this as to why, because you reach a certain age, you start having to pay for what you've paid into all your life, but that's the bigger issue. But that this cap was uh, introduced notionally, so that you'd only have to spend a certain amount of your own funds on care. I can't remember the exact figure, and it's not in this article. And after that, then the state would step in. But now, uh, that's to be shelved, apparently, as part of the government's um, autumn budget, let's be real. So you'd have to spend budget. all of your money. You'd just spend and spend until every penny had gone. Mm. So you might say, OK, well, you're sitting on an, a half a million pound house, which will, when you die, will go to your family and make them all better off. So why should the state not pay? People don't say that. If, you, if you're 55 even and you have to have a serious uh, heart operation, they don't say, well, your house is worth half a million, so, you know, get your checkbook out. Yeah. It doesn't work like that. Anyway, it's one of the things that's going to be scrapped. And I just find this disgusting, that elderly people... I'm not part of it anymore, my mum died, but I witnessed it at the time. What a shambles. But elderly people being put through all this um, when there are so many other ways that our money's being wasted, and we'll come on to that. Yeah. But it's, it's, people it's said to me... It's absolutely heartbreaking. I mean, is there any point... And is there any point in going, oh, you know, I mustn't smoke, I mustn't drink alcohol, I must, I must have a healthy I'm, diet, I must exercise, I must make sure... Money. I must make No, money. no, I must make sure I stay alive till I'm 80. And as my brother said, stuff that. He said, I'm not going to end up sitting in an armchair, dribbling into my own chest, being neglected <laughs> in a care home. Anyway. Well, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah. And you don't have to pay I for it. I sit in my armchair <laughs> having a dribble. <laughs> yeah, well, um, I want to live as long as I possibly can. I'll tell you that for nothing. Well, we all um, do. David, let's have a look at the mail, should we, and, and the football? Yes. I mean, if we want to laugh, it should be the World Cup. I mean, ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculous. They're holding it in Qatar. Uh. It, that's absurd. Uh. They're holding it in the middle of the season, and then they're telling the clubs that pay these players wages that we, we shouldn't be playing them because they might get injured before the World Cup. So anyway... Uh, the Mail, uh, FIFA asked players to just talk about football in Catholic. See, it's the moral, the lack of any moral imperative in football. Um, and so the head of FIFA, Gianni Infantino, sounds like a character out of The Godfather, maybe he is. On staff. Pleading with them to stick to talking about football once the tournament has kicked off. But how, uh, however, when you go further into the Mail, you've got Martin Samuel, their chief sports writer, very good writer. Blame FIFA's cabal of crooks, injury chaos cheapens the World Cup. 
I mean, the World Cup should be something you play at the end of a season. Mm. The World Cup should be something that doesn't interrupt. Um, you see, because I'm uh, maybe I'm, I'm a sad person, but you know, I don't really care much about what happens to England. I probably won't watch a second of the World Cup, but I do care. This is the sadness of my life. What happens to Chelsea? Mm. And so, mm. as far as I'm concerned, England kidnapping some of our players and injuring them. It doesn't work for me. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, a club football man, and I'm, I'm sure there are lots of people who are like that. Mm. And so we, we're off in November, uh, uh, this month indeed, to the World Cup, and only because money was... A lot of these dreadful old men on FIFA, the cabal of crooks, as Martin Samuel called them, they were bribed. Yes. They were paid money to put the World Cup... Now, well, that's now, bad. Cat, now Qatar's paying fans to say nice things about them. They're being bribed and, and, as well, and, you know, and, and someone like David Beckham's getting paid millions mm. to, promote, mm. to, to promote Qatar. But the, but, the, but, the, but the point is, when they knew, and, so, and to be fair, some members of FIFA were either thrown out or sent to prison, why do they still continue with it? Mm. You do wonder. Um, look, we're almost out of time. Oh. So, but let's talk boy George. You promised us a bit of boy George. OK. Well, can we, can we do the other issue after then? Well, next time. Well, maybe. Next nice. time. Requisitioning private homes for migrants. I've had letters and phone calls from the council. Anyway, yeah, on a, on a lighter note, boy George, I absolutely love boy George. Yeah. yeah, I've known him for years. He's so cheeky and funny. Um, and I did a, a show about legends on the BBC for the last 12 months. Um, so 50, you know, one a week, and he just, he's just the best. Is he on I'm a Celebrity? He's, yeah. got, he's going but into look, the jungle. I cannot have this. I'm a Celebrity is about Matt Hancock. Anything that distracts <laughs> well. attention from, my, uh, from Hancock eating kangaroo testicles, preferably oh. cooked, that's not allowed. Forget, <laughs> forget anything asked in the House of, Ma of, uh, of him in, in Parliament. Whatever happened to Matt Hancock, no matter how humiliated, wait till he has to sit on a log by the fire with Boy George. Boy George will rip him to shreds. He's so witty and sharp and bitchy and funny. But he's not going to be a diva. Well, it's good. It's got Matt. He will win. I'm saying it now publicly. He can't Do help but be a diva. Do you want... He's not a diva. No, I, I mean that in the nice of I, I too love, yeah. love George. Yeah. I think he's a lovely guy. But yeah. he'll, he'll do the diva thing. Of course he will. I wonder if he'll, he'll perform, won't he? Yeah, I'm wondering yeah. whether he'll... Have, That's what they're paying him, all that money. He'll be in full makeup yeah. every day and, you know, hat and hair on, whether he'll show his raw self. I doubt oh. it. But Matt Hancock isn't going to have to do these bush type well, trials, Matt, is well, he? Will Matt he's Hancock show his raw self? Why, why, why hasn't Matt Hancock got to eat kangaroo things? He hasn't got to do the bush tucker Why? Trials because he has a medical condition. Oh, does it? What, yeah, he's coward. allergic yeah. to <laughs> kangaroo testicles. Yeah. Well, I'm going to say I'm allergic well, to kangaroo how did, testicles. How does he know? That's the main thing. Well, apparently that's what they're saying. Right. Well, so he I, goes round eating them with well, the well, kangaroos well, still attached. Anyway, uh, do, you want, do, you want, do you want to bet? <laughs> what a thought. <laughs> no, I don't do betting. Oh. No. Yeah, I, I agree. George, George needs to win. George will win. He'll win it. Walk it. I mean, I like no, I want Matt to stay in for as long as possible. Yes. Oh, yeah. And do you know what? I might even watch this rated programme, which I've never, ever No, watched. I've never seen no, it. Never seen but it. I think I might make an exception for this. I'm not going to watch the Royal World Cup, but I might watch mm. uh, Matt mm. in the jungle. Except it's not a jungle, of course. It's a pond down the bottom of the hotel they stay in in Australia. Yeah. And is that all it is? creepy girls. Yes, oh. that's all it is. And they import the creepy crawlies. We've got some on this programme we can send them. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> You're oh. really going to enjoy this. Ah. I can't, I can't, for the life of me, understand why he's agreed to do it. I cannot. <laughs> Matt Hancock. Matt Hancock. 350 quid. Quid? Oh, 350,000. Oh, sorry, 350,000. Yeah. Is that? Yeah. Oh, well, I do. Forgive me, it's age. I so, think he might have a notion that his political career's in tatters. Yeah, well, this isn't a way to <laughs> Why would he think it? that? How could he possibly think that? Funny that, isn't it? Um, look, Liz and David, we've got to leave it there. Good to see you this morning. Thank you very much. <laughs>